Let's turn our attention now to factoring non-monic trinomials. So remember, a trinomial is an expression with three terms like this, and we call it monic if the coefficient of the highest power, the coefficient of the x squared, is 1. This is not monic because the coefficient is not 1. In this case, it's a 2. So we're going to explore techniques for factoring polynomials like this. Now, the first thing you want to try is to turn it into a monic polynomial problem. Let's see if we can factor out a greatest common factor. That's the easiest thing we can do when we're factoring. And if it works, we might be able to reduce this problem to a factoring a monic trinomial. So take a look at the coefficients, and sure enough, all of these coefficients are products of 2. 2, negative 2, and negative 12. We can write each of those as something times 2, and that means that we can factor out the GCF, which is 2. If I factor that 2 out, it leaves an x squared on the first term, a minus x on the second term, and a minus 6 on the third term. And that's great. Now the quantity in parentheses is a monic trinomial, and those we know are usually easier to factor. So let's see what it's going to look like. If we're able to factor, it's going to look like x plus or minus something times x plus or minus something. And the approach we used for that was to figure out what the factors of negative 6 are, and then for each set of factors we look at the sum, and we're going to look for the sum that gives us this coefficient, which is really a negative 1. Factors of negative 6, what can we multiply together to get negative 6? Well, negative 6 and positive 1 would work positive 6 and negative 1 would work, positive 2 and negative 3 would work, negative 2 and positive 3 would work, and when we consider the sums of each of these, negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5, 6 and negative 1 is positive 5, 2 plus negative 3 is negative 1, and oh, we can stop there because that's what we want. So I'll have x plus 2, and x plus negative 3, or x minus 3. That's our factored form. So we can see if it's possible to factor out a GCF and leave behind a monic polynomial, then that's the approach that we're going to want to take. But that's not always going to work. For example, in this problem, factoring 2x squared minus 7x minus 4, the greatest common factor for each of those terms is 1, right? You can't pull out a 2 because this negative 7 is not an, a multiple of 2. So we're going to need a different approach. The technique we're going to illustrate in this video is called factoring by grouping. or in some books it's referred to as the AC method. And the reason for that is because it reminds us of the process we're going to go through. If we think of the general trinomial in this form as something times x squared plus something times x plus something, and we use a, B, and C to represent those coefficients. The AC method tells us to look for factors of AC, that is A times C. So in this problem, A is 2, C is negative 4, don't forget that minus there, so a times c is negative 4, and we're going to look for factors. Uh, sorry, a, a times c 
in this case is 2 times negative 4, so that's negative 8. We're going to look for factors of negative 8. So this looks similar to the process that we used on the previous problem. It will deviate a little bit later, but it starts out the same. So we're going to look for factors of negative 8, and just like before, we want the sum to add up to the middle coefficient, the negative 7, represented by b. So you can go through factors of negative 8, and for example, positive 2 and negative 4, negative 2 and positive 4, positive 8 and negative 1, negative 8 and positive 1, and then look at the sums. 2 plus negative 4 gives you negative 2. Negative 2 plus positive 4 gives you positive 2. 8 plus negative 1 gives you 7. Negative 8 plus positive 1 gives you negative 7. And that last one is what I'm looking for. I want the sum to be b. So I look at factors of ac, and I want the combination whose sum is b. That's the ac method. Now, when we were factoring monic trinomials, we were basically done at this point. All we had to do was write down the answer. But for non-monic trinomials, there's an additional step. This is where we're grouping things, which is why other books, instead of calling it the AC method, call it factoring by grouping. What we're going to do is use these values, these factors of AC, to split up the middle term of the trinomial. Here's what I mean. I have 2x squared, but instead of writing negative 7x, I'm going to split that up using the coefficients we identified. So I'll have negative 8x plus 1x. And then I just copy the minus 4 that was above. So Notice that if I combine like terms right now, negative 8x plus 1x would give me negative 7x. But I'm not combining like terms. I split it up, which is the opposite of combining like terms, because the next step is how we're going to group things together. I'm going to take the first two terms here and consider that a group. I'm going to take the second two terms and consider that a group. And in each group, I want to factor out a GCF. From the first two terms, I can see a greatest common factor of 2x, right? Each of these has a, two, a factor of 2. This 2 can be pulled out, and it can be pulled out of negative 8. But there's also an x that can be pulled out. So if I do that, pulling 2x out of 2x squared, what does that leave behind? x. And pulling 2x out of negative 8x leaves negative 4 right? Negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. And I've already pulled out the x. Then on the second expression in parentheses, 1x minus 4, what's the greatest common factor? Well, just a 1. There's really nothing else we can pull out. But now look, both of these expressions here have a factor of x minus 4. So I could actually pull x minus 4 out from each of them. And if I do that, what does it leave behind? Out of the first product here, if I pull out the x minus 4, that leaves the 2x behind. And out of the second product, if I pull out the x minus 4, that leaves the 1 behind. This is the factored form. And if you want to check it, if you want to make sure it's right, all you have to do is distribute and make sure you end up with 2x squared minus 7x minus 4. Let's look at another one. Same idea. We're going to use the AC method or factoring by grouping. So if we think of these coefficients as a, b, and c, I want to take a times c, which will be 12, 4 times 3 is 12, and look at factors of 12. and then look at the sum of those factors for each combination. 
So factors of 12. 12 times 1, 6 times 2, 4 times 3, and negative 12 times negative 1. Negative 6 times negative 2. Negative 4 times negative 3. Now let's look at the sums. 12 plus 1 is 13. 6 plus 2 is 8. Ah, and we're done. That's what I want. 8. So I listed all the combinations here to make sure to emphasize the fact that you might have to consider negatives as well. But we don't even need to explore them. As soon as we find the coefficient we're looking for in the sum, we can move on to the next step. So now we move on to splitting up that middle coefficient using the 6 and the 2. So instead of writing 8x, we write plus 6x plus 2x. And split things up into two groupings. Out of each grouping, we factor the GCF. So what's the greatest common factor in the first set of parentheses? Well, each expression inside those parentheses has a factor of x we can pull out. And 4 and 6 are both multiples of 2, and there's no larger number that they're both multiples of. So I can pull out a 2x, and that leaves behind 2x from the first term and 3 from the second term. Move on to the second set of parentheses. What's the greatest common factor of 2x plus 3? Of the greatest common factor of 2x and 3? Just 1. Now I see a 2x plus 3 showing up as a factor of the first product and a factor in the second product. So I can pull that out of the whole thing. And when I pull it out of the first product, it leaves the 2x behind. When I pull it out of the second product, it leaves the 1 behind. And that is our answer for factoring 4x squared plus 8x plus 3. Let's do one more. Factor 8x squared plus 14x minus 4. Now, there's something that we did not do in the previous two examples that we didn't need to do, but it's a really good idea to check and make sure that you can. You Ideally, the simplest way to solve these problems is when you factor out a GCF and it leaves a monic trinomial behind. So you should always try to factor out a GCF. Now we're not going to be able to factor out the 8 because neither 14 or negative 4, neither of those are products of 8. But we should still see if there's a greatest common factor we can pull out. And in this case, it would be 2. 2 is a factor of 8, 14, and negative 4. So if I pull that out, it leaves 4x squared plus 7x minus 2. I didn't manage to change this into a monic trinomial, but it is better. Because the coefficients are smaller, I'm not going to have to check as many combinations of factors when I use the AC method. Because I'm going to look at the simpler polynomial, the one in parentheses with the smaller coefficients. It reduces the amount of work I have to do later. So let's see what will happen if we treat this polynomial as ax squared plus bx plus c and I look at factors of a times c. a times c is 4 times negative 2, that's negative 8. I need to consider factors of negative 8. And what are they? Well, negative 8 times 1, 8 times negative 1, 4 times negative 2, negative 4 times positive 2, and then negative 8 times 1 is negative 7, or uh, negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7, 8 plus negative 1 is positive 7. Oh, that's my B, so I can stop there.
and I can use the 8 and the negative 1 to split up the 7. So 4x squared plus 7x, instead write it as plus 8x minus 1x minus 2. And notice how I'm only looking at the quantity in parentheses right now. I cannot forget about this 2. We're going to have to remember to bring that back later as part of our final answer. But let's just focus on the trinomial in parentheses right now. So I've split up the middle, co the middle term using my factors 8 and negative 1. I group them. Now let's be careful here. If I put parentheses here right now, that's incorrect. Why? Well, this negative, you can think of that as a negative 1, that has to be distributed to both of these. And if I distribute negative 1 times negative 2, I'm going to get a positive 2. I don't want a positive 2, I want a negative 2. So I better change this to a plus sign inside. Clean that up a little bit. So the idea is because I have a negative 1 out front, I need to be careful after I distribute that the sign is correct. Negative times positive gives me a negative, which is what I need. Always be careful about that when you've got a negative sign splitting your terms. Okay, now we've grouped, and so we need to make sure uh, we pull out the greatest common factor from each term. Um, when you look at just the coefficients, you can pull out a, a 4, because 4 and 8 are both products of 4, and both terms inside the first set of parentheses also are multiples of x, so I can actually pull out 4x, leaving behind x plus 2. And in the second set, uh, the only thing I can pull out is a 1. Now both terms here have factors of x plus 2. And if I pull that out, it leaves 4x behind, and it leaves minus 1 behind. So that is how we can factor 4x squared plus 7x minus 2. But the original problem was factoring 8x squared plus 14x minus 4. So this is where that extra 2 comes from out front. So 2 times x plus 2 times 4x minus 1. That's the complete answer. And if you want to check that, then you can distribute. And you might distribute in two steps. You could distribute these to expand. And then when you're done, you can multiply everything by the 2 that's out front. Distribute that 2 afterward. And when you're done and you combine like terms, you'll see you do get 8x squared plus 14x minus 4.